Thank you so much for coming uh, here. Uh, I will be well, I'm Kande, I'm going to see working for Cobra and I will be talking about asynchronous uh, now is a question what it is and why it is needed. So maybe lots of you know that uh, me and Cobra are working on the LibreOffice Online and uh, LibreOffice Online has very many of the specific needs uh, and uh, its structure is so that like, there is a website schema uh, which is uh, responsible for the actual communication with the JavaScript client. Uh, it connects uh, to the LibreOffice and uh, uh, manages also the instances of LibreOffice so that uh, so that like it is possible uh, to use like one LibreOffice instance actually for for each and every document, uh, but does it in a way so that it is not too uh, resource intensive. Uh, so we do it so that uh, there is uh, like one process uh, that actually uh, has lots of the LibreOffice kit uh, pre pre initialized. So that the fonts are loaded uh, and uh, initialized, and lots of other things are uh, are there and like, uh, initialized as well. And from there, we actually like spawn uh, every time that a new document is needed. And uh, to be rendered. Uh, it also this server part manages the user's interaction uh, in the document. So whenever the user uh, presses a key to the JavaScript part, it is sent by WebSocket to this WebSocket server, and then from that on, like this, uh, it is actually like passed to the, to the right instance of the graphics uh, that uh, that like manages the, the editing of the document itself. Uh, this is all written in C++. Then, of course, we have this uh, as client part. Uh, so, this is uh, what actually the user sees in this worker browser and like, is taking care of, uh, uh, of, uh, of the interaction with the user. Uh, the, the thing that, that you can see on the screen is actually uh, like uh, the JavaScript uh, for, the, for the menus, so the user interactions uh, are, uh, are done locally. But like when there is something that is executed, it's sent by the WebSocket to the server, and like uh, then it is handled the, the way how it is needed. Um, it is uh, very useful uh, to, uh, to tell here like what the document actually is. Uh, so the document itself uh, is not is not text. Uh, what the user sees is actually like series of files. So areas of Pixels that are 256 to 256 uh, pixels, and uh, this is rendered on the server. Like whenever there is a change in the document, either triggered uh, by the user's change uh, here uh, in the in the in the client, or triggered internally uh, from the LibreOffice core. For example, like when there is an uh, animated GIF or something like that, uh, there is an update sent uh, to the server of the And the users, uh, users see a new GIF. Why it doesn't feel like uh, like series of GIFs? It is because the the actual cursor is uh, uh, is in a separate layer uh, that is uh, that is uh, painted in the JavaScript, and that is uh, and so that is why is it like uh, why is it uh, like easy to uh, to update? It can be a blinking cursor. Because it would be very unfortunate to send like a new PNG for a blink, blink of the cursor. So that's a separate layer. And when you move inside the document, it moves exactly as if uh, uh, as if uh, the user was if it was composed from, from real letters. Because uh, like it is the LibreOffice uh, uh, LibreOffice kit uh, that actually sends the sends the positions of the cursor. It sends it as if it was rendered on the normal screen, not using the the, the data frame. The same thing through the, this is true for the uh, for the selections. So still, like it feels like a normal editing in the in the normal document. Uh, so JavaScript is used for these layers, for many toolbars, status bar. But it seems impractical to do everything uh, 
the in the in the JavaScript, or many things are on the other hand impractical, uh, impractical to do in the core. Uh, the balance we are searching here uh, is uh, like comes from the history when we started with this as a prototype when we rendered just everything uh, everything in the LibreOffice and then we slowly like we are finding like, what is the right balance between uh, between the like server side rendering and what is supposed to be in in, in JavaScript uh, and uh, it seems that the right balance is like when we can send a task for all the users like. What is the functionality that we can send to, to, the, uh, to all the users? That's the correct thing to render on the server. But like when there's something that is specific uh, for just one user, like when there are more people connected to the document, that is exactly the thing that should be uh, should be handled in the, in the JavaScript part. So then we started with uh, with uh, the discursors, as I've said, but uh, later like it went on uh, to data validation and how. Uh, comments in the uh, in the in the documents, uh, so like the, the normal commenting thing was first implemented as, a, as a, like rendered in the task as you see it in the normal office, but then it was transferred into, into JavaScript comments, which added lots of uh, like nice uh, things here because the comments can float, reorganize themselves, find each other. Very nice. But what about dialogues? Dialogues are uh, something that we started first implementing in JavaScript itself because like, it sounds like it is specific to the, to the app one user as well. But it quickly turned out that, uh, that like, re-implementing the dialogues in JavaScript is like, extremely tedious and extremely uh, like a process that takes too long time. Uh, so we had to find a like, special character, but then it turned out that uh, it is much better to take the dialogues as they are in LibreOffice and tunnel them, uh, tunnel them to, the, to the JavaScript part. So, yeah, we started working on this, uh, on this uh, thing and nearly one year later, we finally had some fruit of the fruitful results. And most of the work was done uh, by by Kanaka, uh, which uh, to, to a big, uh, big thanks here. Uh, uh, unfortunately, he went study to to do this, so I was going to be able to stop it. So, so now it is working. Uh, the features are exposed. Uh, there's lots of things here, like events, character, page properties. You can see some dialogues that are here. Uh, but of course, it is not a finished journey yet. So now I can see something easy to expose to the uh, but still you have to do some changes in the core for each of the dialogues. Uh, I will come later like, why it is necessary, uh, because like, I will talk about some of the, uh, of the details here. Uh, but like, the first uh, version, like, the, the, to, to actually see the dialogue, is now like a very 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 easy to do, uh, very easy to expose, but then like you have to check if it works uh, for the collaboration or not. So uh, from the technical point of view, uh, it works so uh, that uh, that we have built on the Galaxy uh, screenshotting feature um, that uh, that was uh, uh, done. Uh, for the uh, for the TDF vendor, uh, uh, but then uh, like we started to to, uh, to expand it so that uh, so that like it is more interactive. It is not only like uh, that, that you initialize the dialogue and uh, do a screenshot of that. Uh, we need uh, to be able to uh, to notify actually uh, the leader of the, the, the client, the JavaScript client, that one of the dialogue uh, was popped up. Uh, because it's not necessary, uh, it is not always that the, the, the data will be triggered you know, like, by the user very directly. It is sometimes that you already have a dialogue uh, that has a button to actually like, execute another data. Uh, so it is something that we do not, uh, we cannot control the JavaScript part. Because like, when you already have R running the, one of the dialogues, it is 
running um, in the LibreOffice kit, and like you cannot catch the event of actually like running the dialog. You have to uh, you have to do the infrastructure in a way uh, that uh, like you advertise that something dialog is locked up. Of course, uh, in validation of the parts, so when something changes in the dialog, uh, because there's lots of like when you, uh, for example, change state of the radio button or something like that. This has to be at the past, which you have to JavaScript file and send like the update of that area that was painted and things like that. Uh, so for this work, uh, we have added the concept of uh, the graphics kit modifier, uh, which is uh, some the general structure that uh, like when uh, when you provide this uh, to a dialog, like uh, each of the dialog can have uh, this known notifier. So when a dialog has this notifier, it sends some of these events. Like, we have bound it uh, like directly to the code, like where it is necessary. Uh, it causes a LibreOffice notifier, and then uh, this LibreOffice notifier uh, takes care of actually like doing the callbacks uh, to the to the JavaScript uh, to the JavaScript part. Uh, this is uh, just a uh, summary of the, of the things uh, that had to be uh, that had to be done in the notifier. So very obvious things like painting down, uh, posting stuff about the, uh, the new events, about most events, uh, and stuff like that. And on the other hand, uh, these callbacks that, that, that advertise that something has changed. So uh, so windows indicating you know, the actions that it was created. Something has changed, size changed, and there was an or cursor is moved uh, to somewhere. Because, of course, obvious, uh, obviously, uh, the dialogs have uh, their own cursor uh, as well. Uh, another thing that, that was quite challenging here is that uh, the, the dialogs have to be localized. Uh, so, so uh, when we implemented that, uh, like quite a long uh, great work on, the, on actually using get text was not done yet. Uh, so we had to uh, hack uh, the Eurofus for heavily uh, to be able to actually uh, like force a uh, force language for the uh, for actual dialogue. And this is again in order to be able to have multiple uh, multiple users in one document, but each of them uh, like could have uh, their own language setting. Uh, so like that could be one uh, user that, uh, that uses it that check the other in German uh, language and it still has to work. So like when we are painting the dialog uh, for one of the user, we just have to switch the language like directly for the painting and switch it to, uh, uh, for the other. Uh, there was lots of stuff with resources to, uh, to do that, but luckily like these days it is uh, much cleaner and, and easier to do. So, how the conversion of the dialogs to uh, async work like, and what is it actually to async? Uh, so, uh, so uh, the I should have changed the order of the So, model dialogs are a problem. Uh, it is so that uh, the Normally, the model dialogs uh, block the user input uh, for everything else. Uh, so, like when you pop up the model dialog, um, you can be sure that no actions in the actual uh, in the actual document are taking place. So, with the model dialogs, like uh, it's not possible for the other users to actually do something. But we, in the uh, in the collaborative uh, editing, we actually need to do something else. We still need to do. Uh, like uh, enable the other users to be actual uh, like that they still could edit the document and anything. Luckily, uh, lots of this uh, stuff already works or already worked before we started uh, this, uh, this execute uh, this uh, this uh, this async work. Uh, it is because like uh, the flow uh, in the interface is so that like you have to manual uh, until you actually like execute some some rule now. So in this uh, in this uh, main rule, uh, the events are flowing in, and uh, if for 
seal uh, so that like uh, uh, and other things that, that are going on uh, can can take place. So even when the model dialog uh, was executed, it still uh, was possible to hack it in the way that uh, that like you could have seen that, that, that it was still possible to type uh, like behind the scenes. So this was good for us. Like the executor, uh, you have seen the dialog, but uh, like uh, the editing, the editing from the other users were. Uh, the problem was like when two users actually open the same dialog. So like factor properties is something that lots of users uh, will want to change, just like all the uh, color of the font or stuff like that. And when these two actually open it at the same time, it means that like there was this main loop. From main loop, there was an execute. And from this execute, it called yield. And this yield again triggered another data, another execute. So it was main loop, execute, execute. So in order to now close the dialogs, both these executes had, had to finish. So the events just worked. Like you were able to, you know, to close the dialog in a way that it, it was hidden. But before both these executes actually were closed, uh, you didn't return to the main group. So it means that uh, the actual change of the attributes was not applied, which was the main problem here. And uh, so we started to think, like, what what to change here uh, so that uh, so that like it works for the user. And then luckily, there was something that uh, that already was implemented in the office, and it was start as a uh, which means that uh, it was a functionality that that uh, like showed the data, but returned the control back to the menu. So there was no execute that would be calling the deal, uh, but uh, like when you actually started two dialogues instead of like getting this, uh, this stack of like main loop, execute, execute because main loop did something to show the dialog written back to the main loop and the other uh, instance of the dialog again just, just show the dialog and return to the main loop. Ideal for us, this is what we need. But it turned out that uh, using the, uh, this uh, was very practical because like for each like when the execution actually ended, you have to apply uh, the attribute. So when you click OK, uh, you have to you have to have the code that that applies this. And for this, it was uh, like for the start execute model, it was always necessary to uh, to create a new uh, new swap uh, for this. Uh, move the code actually like out of the procedure, like very rare or method very rare, uh, to somewhere else to do the stuff there. Uh, so instead we thought like it would be better to load the use lambda, use lambda. Uh, so you can see like in the easy easy cases it leads to very small uh, first small point change. So in the red, uh, it's the original code. So instead of scope VCL pointer, uh, you change it to VCL pointer. It is so that the lifetime uh, lifetime of the dialog uh, doesn't end uh, with going down to scope. The scope VCL pointer means that the dial is distracted when the control goes out of the out of the phone. Uh, instead the VCL pointer uh, just like it keeps it alive until after the dial is, uh, is actually uh, like triggered to be, uh, to be closed. The other thing uh, that is changed here is the uh, the execute is changed to start start execute the same. Uh, then you have this lambda down uh, for like actually Taking the part of the, uh, the stuff that, that, that is out of scope there uh, to, uh, to get it in scope of the, of the lambda, fun lambda function. Uh, result is uh, what is then called with, like uh, when the when the data is actually closed, uh, it's the result that you can so okay for that. So, and then you have the code that was previously here uh, in, in many cases. Uh, because like it was not in the case, like if the result of the execute was okay, do something with the okay and, uh, and apply the attributes. So in many cases, it's just like this. Well, you are using directly the code that is there. 
Unfortunately, like there are more uh, more advanced cases, and it needs more thinking about general cases like like this. So using one that's most 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 features here uh, saves time, saves uh, um, testing. Because you know, like if it is uh, if it's small case, it is working, then you just click through the through the dial and see uh, that it's, it is there. Uh, for non mono dialogues, uh, the situation was, uh, of course, uh, much easier uh, because we is very uh, not using uh, not using any type of SFX. Uh, they were directly using uh, the SFX infrastructure uh, for res registering the child window, and then in the code, when you actually want to, to show the dialog, uh, there's a uh, local child window uh, which works directly from the main room and stays in the main room, so, so not much. Uh, not much there. Uh, and it's very out of the box uh, for the cover of the So, usual payment, the uh, Sometimes it happens uh, that uh, you expose a dialogue in the online, uh, but it doesn't appear. Uh, so, very usually it is that, uh, that, the, that the dialogue just doesn't have a term. Uh, because like, it is not necessary in, uh, for BCL to do a learn. And uh, but, uh, we need it uh, in order to be able to set up the, uh, the local modifier here. Uh, so you just need to assign it to view shell. You, in, in all the applications, the right click path, the press, you actually have uh, a way how to get the view shell pointer. So you just assign it there uh, to be very Again, until after you want to make it work for the color, everything, but you have to do this, this conversion and the same. Uh, now, as a speech language for users, luckily uh, these days it is uh, not uh, the big issue. Still, there could be some cases like where uh, very low case, some, some, some way cache, so you have to check uh, if all works uh, as expected. But these days, like, this, is, this is usually sort of done and, and breaks. But anything else, in case you would like to, uh, you would like to expose the dialogue in the online uh, and it doesn't work for you, please reach to us uh, on the IRC and uh, or the mailing list and we will be very happy to help you. So, thank you so much for listening. The uh, work, as I've said, uh, was mostly done by Bernard uh, Lots of uh, lots of conversion I had made. My colleagues thank him for the platform uh, lockdown. For the executive same. So, that is from me. So, questions, please.
Yes. <laughs> so uh, we have some proof of concept uh, thanks to uh, uh, so thanks to Ash. Yeah, thanks to Ash, we have a proof of concept code uh, for the sidebar, uh, and we will use exactly this uh, for the sidebar. So, uh, like the entire sidebar, uh, it, it is uh, detached uh, from, from the uh, like from from the logically, of course, like it is all demand scenes, but logically it is detached uh, from the uh, from the window and then sent as a as a window uh, to the uh, to the to the application and then. Of course, like there's uh, UI to be done so that it looks like a, a, like, a, like a sidebar online, uh, but behind the scenes, like it is a detached, uh, detached window uh, that is uh, located in the model, uh, so we do not have to convert it in any way to, uh, to the same, uh, but like it is necessary to have it as a detached window uh, so that the resizing actually works. Like, not the horizontal resizing is not that important, but the vertical one. Because you can change the browser window and then you would be losing the two functions that it's that is slower there. Yeah, very good.